Today, we'll take a look at one of the largest insurance companies in Canada and we'll make a full stock analysis on the company Manulife for the ticker MFC. As always, after checking their business model, so how are they able to generate their income, I'll make a quick fundamental analysis followed by price prediction to determine what is the true intrinsic value of this company. Without further ado, let's get to it right now. Manulife is currently the largest Canadian insurance companies in terms of of its assets under management and it is also ranking in the top 10 worldwide in this sector with many hundreds of billions of dollars under its management. Add to this with a workforce that exceeds 40,000 employees with many agents and partners. This company that is currently worth close to 60 billion dollars has over 30 million customers all around the globe. As any great financial institution, Manulife is offering a wide range of products and services to their customers such as great life insurance, health insurance and travel insurance, but also credit cards, loans, bank accounts and investing products. An excellent news about Manulife is that they are able to offer these products and services worldwide to many different places in Canada, in the US, in Europe and in Asia. In 2023, these products and services have helped manual life to generate over 6.3 billion dollars of core earnings, which actually represents an increase of about 15% compared to 2022. This important growth has been driven by two important factors where we know that their insurance product sales have been increasing year over year of about 22% and where on their side their investing products have been increasing by about 15% year over year. But still at the moment you might be wondering, hey but Louis, how does an insurance company is able to generate generate the biggest part of their total income. Well, in fact, you need to know that most insurance companies generate the biggest part of their income from two main sources. First, they are charging premiums to their different clients in exchange of insurance coverage, and then they are reinvesting those premiums into interest generating assets as we will see later on in their impressive portfolio. At the end of the day, for the investors, it means that it is super important to understand how many new policies have been sold throughout the last year to be able to know what is the total sum of all of the premiums of the company. But you also want to be sure that the company isn't using too much of their premiums to pay the different incidents that have occurred to their clients. It is why in the case of this analysis, we'll take a look at the annual premium equivalent aka the APE, but we'll also glance at the contractual service margin aka the C. SM. First, DP represents the total annualized value of all the new single premiums combined with the recurring premium policies. So it represents the sum of the total value of regular or recurring premium plus 10% of any new single premiums written for the fiscal year. In the case of Manulife, the great news is that for the fourth quarter of 2023, their APE sales have been increasing by 20% up to $1.6 billion for for the quarter. Now for the CSM, this represents the unearned profit that the company expects to earn as it provides different services. For Manulife, the other great news is that for the Q4 of 2023, we've seen that this number has been increasing up by 41% to $626 million. These are all some pretty encouraging news for the investors that are showing that this company is able to continuously grow their total sales of their new policies. But what is also pretty interesting is the fact that the company is also able to generate quite a lot of money from its different investing portfolio. As I told you earlier, the first source of income from Manulife is made by selling different new premiums. But then all of these new and recurring premiums are reinvested in their massive $417 billion asset portfolio. In this incredible portfolio, we find that about 50% of their total assets are invested in different corporate and government bonds. And then the rest is invested in other asset classes such as public equity, private debt, mortgage, real estate, and farmland. Plus the excellent news is that more than 96% of the total bonds that are held in this portfolio are considered as some investment 
encourage investment. This means that those bonds have a rating of 3B or more, meaning that they are quite safe for the investors. All of these great news have made that the company has been able to beat the analyst predictions in terms of their earnings per share predicted at $0.85 per share and reported at $0.92 per share. Plus, since one year, we can see that the company is up by more than 20%, where since the beginning of 2024, we can see that it has been up by over 10%. So now let's see what the valuation metrics are telling us about the true intrinsic value of Manulife. The first thing we can notice is that Manulife currently worth about $58 billion, but with a pretty low price to earnings ratio of only about 12, combined with excellent price to sales and price to book ratio of only about 1.40, those metrics are showing that this company would currently be quite undervalued at the moment. In terms of the profitability of this insurance company, we can see that over the last 12 months, they've been able to achieve some incredible profit and operating margin, as well as a fair return on equity over the last 12 months of about 11.57%. Add to this, as I just told you, this company is able to generate quite a lot of total revenue and a lot of revenue growth, where we can see that over the last 12 months, they've been able to generate over 20 seven billion dollars of revenue but what is truly astonishing is their quarterly revenue growth year over year of about 390 percent and their great quarterly earnings growth year over year of about close to 100 percent plus as any great financial company this company always keep quite a lot of cash with about 26 billion dollars in cash at the moment compared to a smaller debt of only about 22 billion dollars which makes that its debt to equity ratio is only about 45 percent now in terms of the volatility of the company represents by the beta on a five years period, we can see that the company is slightly more volatile than the overall market with a beta of more than one. But over the last 52 weeks, we can see that this company hasn't been able to achieve the same performance as for the overall market. Nevertheless, what is pretty interesting about Manulife is that they are giving close to 5% of dividend with only a payout ratio of less than 60%. And so this is showing that the company isn't using too much of their earnings to pay the dividends to their shareholders, which means that the company could eventually even grow more their total dividend over the next couple of years. Now, in terms of their total revenue, we can see that despite important decrease in them in 2022, we can see that over the last year, they've been able to come back to some pretty normal level with some important growth and so it has been translated that despite some pretty negative net income in 2022 in 2023 they've come back with some incredible growth with some net income of close to 5.5 billion dollars. But now to determine what is the true intrinsic value of Manulife, as always, we'll be using many different valuation models, starting with the Peter Lynch valuation one, which is a simple formula where you add the future growth of the earnings per share with the dividend yield and that you divide with the price to earnings ratio. And with all of these inputs, we find that the stock would currently be quite fairly valued close to being undervalued right now. Unfortunately, for your dividend discounted model, we won't be able to use it because our average growth rate is currently higher than our weight average cost of capital. Plus, in terms of the discounted cash flow model, as always, we'll be trying first to find what is our weight average cost of capital. And to do so, we need to find what is the cost of debt, the cost of equity, and the cost of debt in equity to find what is our weight average cost of capital of close to 10%. And so by simply discounting what are our future free cash flow that are predicted, we are able to find what is the true intrinsic value of this business that is close to $173 at the moment. And so according to these metrics, we find that the company would currently be quite massively undervalued right now. And finally, we'll be using the Grams original value formula and the Grams revised value formula. And so with both of these models, we can find that our company would also be quite massively undervalued right now. As you've been able to see in this video, Manulife is definitely a top pick for anyone looking for a company that is able to grow their total premium sales year after year. With this simple business model combined with an excellent investing portfolio of more than $400 billion, it is fair to say that Manulife is there to stay. At the same time, with some pretty fair valuation metrics and with some great dividend growth over the past five years with a dividend yield that is close to 5% right now, it is personally a company in which I am invest and 
that I am able to reinvest all the dividends that I receive every single quarter to buy new shares of it. But now on your side, if you're looking to find other great stocks that are currently quite undervalued right now on the stock market, well, check out the video that's going to be right over here and I will see you soon. Peace.